Greetings, life forms, wherever you're receiving us. This is Justin. And Matt. And I stayed up till 3 a.m. playing Super Mario RPG. My name is Landon Doe. <laughs> <laughs> so the newness hasn't worn off. The honeymoon has not ended for you in your SNES Classic just yet. Just yet. No, it has not. Uh, uh, there are 20 great games, and then Kirby Dream Course, whatever it's called. So <laughs> I have a, I have a, uh, an inkling that I will be playing a lot of that, and I'll be talking about it. So you know, just prepare yourself. Okay. All right. We're ready for it. How how is what, your? Has has the newness worn off with you? Have you already cast yours off as just a novelty? No, 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 not yet. I actually last night I I achieved uh, the gold cup in the 100 CC special cup, and now I am. <laughs> Moving on to the 150 CC cups for Mario Kart. There you go, moving on up in the world. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> With Bowser, you got you got to go Bowser. Uh, once you get once you get into like the 100 CC special cup, 150 CC, I feel like you got to go the heavies. You got to go Donkey Kong or you got to go Bowser because everybody else is going to knock you off the track, and you need that top end speed. That's See, my that's my opinion. That. See, I was always just Toad or GTFO. So occasionally Yoshi. But 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 I've I've never you know messed around with any of the higher um, or heavier players I should say. Yeah, my my off my off main my alt would be Koopa Troopa. <laughs> oh, um, that's a good. One. If I had to go with a but but that's at lower level because seriously you get your ass knocked off the track by everybody if you're Koopa Troopa and you start getting into like the ghost houses or the rainbow roads of the world. Yeah, forget about it. I just couldn't stay on the track because I'm too much of a bump and grind racer. I'm gonna be right in there like ramming people and stuff. So that sounds great, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sound like R. Kelly's version. That's what I was thinking. So it uh, is October the 8th. This is episode 66, Order 66 of Nerd News Cafe, which means we're going to kill all the Jedis today. All of them. All of them. Yeah, They're sorry, all Jedis. going down. Um, you had a good run, but, but you know, it's got to come to an end. Eventually there will be a last Jedi, but that, that'll happen in December. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> though uh, we're recording this on the 8th, like you said. Uh, according to one Mark Hamill, you might know him on uh, uh, from certain I've, movies I've on Twitter, he's saying uh, there might be a new trailer by the time you're hearing this podcast. That's right. It's, yeah, Tuesday. So um, when this episode drops, there should be a new Last Jedi trailer. But they there was like a um, some fake news out there that we were already supposed to have one. So it's fake news. It it's was, so sad. Yeah. So uh, some people were a little disappointed about that. But you know what? The mainstream sci-fi media is lying to us. It's so sad. The Stargates, they're not even stars. (laughs) What's up with that? Not a star, not a gate. Discuss. (laughs) It's pathetic. It's sad. It is. Um, We're going to make the sci-fi channel pay for it. (laughs) Sorry. And we'll stick Magave in it because I love him. (laughs) I'm debating on avoiding the trailer when it comes out. I don't know if I want to see it. I mean, we're only. I'm not. We're two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two months out from the debut of the movie, and I'm thinking, you know, I think I can wait. And I don't. And, and, and I mean, it. like, we've already decided we're going to go see this movie, so I don't want any more spoiled or or me being exposed anymore. It's kind of like uh, New York Comic Con uh, happened this past weekend, and the new Pacific Rim Uprising trailer came out, and I've seen a lot of people online pissed that they feel like. They've already given away the big, like, epic battle at the end in the tra- in the trailer. And when I, I hear that, it's like, I am going to stay away from that. Because, yeah. I uh, again, I've already decided I want to see this movie, so I don't want to have that ruined for me. Exactly. Why? They, they didn't mm-hmm. need to do that. Just just put out clips of John Boyega putting the helmet on. People are going to go. Yep. So, some mm-hmm. people might be confused and think they're going to see another Star Wars movie, but that's okay. <laughs> Which, by the way, now that you mention it, I think Star Wars could vastly improve if they introduce Jaegers and giant monsters and robots. I mean, think about it. Well, there are giant monsters, and there are really giant robot camels, the Adats. So they're getting there. <laughs> okay, well, then we just need to have the Adats be trained to stand upright on their back legs like they're people. <laughs> fight. <Yes. laughs> Let them fight. Fight like rams and goats or whatever, like <laughs> rearing up and smacking each other with their front legs. <laughs> um, that would be fun to watch. But uh, that would be a very bizarre special edition. But uh, I'm there's probably like a twenty percent chance that George Lucas actually made that special edition. That's right. So. If you have that footage, please send it to us. Um. Yeah. So Pacific Rim Two. That's right. The trailer came out there, and and again, that that looks like a good one. I guess my point with with Star Wars is just like you said, we're already we're already all going to go see the Last Jedi. The only thing that this trailer could do 
would would potentially maybe make me feel more worried because man, if they put porgs in this trailer. <laughs> Would that be a deal breaker for you? It's not going to be a deal breaker. It's just going to be like, oh, here come the red flags. They're smacking me in the face. So. See, I didn't even think about uh, uh, possibly, you know, those red flags seen or uh, would be raised in the trailer. I didn't even think about that. So, again, yeah. Why at this point are you even putting out a trailer? Don't need to. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Well, with, with Pacific Rim 2... I think I, I had to look it up real quick just to make sure, but I think the reason they went all out and, and showed you the full Monty was for <laughs> the whole the enchilada, budget, if you will. The whole enchilada. It was one hundred nine ninety million to make mm-hmm. the first one. Mm-hmm. Domestically, they only made one hundred one, so yeah. it was a failure technically here yeah. overall of the. And I mean, this really. I mean, it, it's a it's a large number, but to me, it, it really isn't a huge success for. You know, four hundred and eleven million worldwide. Yeah. Well, they doubled their money. I mean, I feel they like did. I feel like if you make if you make a hundred, you know, a hundred percent profit, you probably are feeling like that's a success. Sure, it is. It, it just, but it's not the success that they probably want off this next one. You know, they probably want to, you know, yeah. completely blow it out of the water domestically, and then worldwide is just, you know, stacks of. I'm surprised it only you made know, money on top of a hundred million domestic. That's a surprise to me. I really thought it did better than that. It it did much better in the I secondary don't... markets, like like in home and word uh... of mouth. But like it was not a big, you know, like movie maker. Uh, movie maker it, in the w- when it was in theaters. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. That makes sense. Yeah. Though. Well, yeah, and the the the, the release date was July twelfth. So it was like running up against whatever was in 2013 in the summer blockbuster, air, you know, genre there or not genre, but I guess season. Um, so that that probably had a lot to do with it. Yeah, and maybe people feel nervous because at that point, you know, we'd been disappointed with our our last giant monster movie, kind of, kind of, uh, uh, you know, like, like I guess. We hadn't had like the new King Kong, right? Like Skull Island. We hadn't had. Mm -hmm, That's true. You know, things where they show us that we can still make giant monster movies that work. And so people didn't know what to expect, maybe. I honestly didn't. I kind of had a. When that movie came out, I had an idea what it was going to be about. But until. And we watched it. I'm pretty sure we watched it on Netflix. Or maybe we. Maybe we red boxed it. So we didn't see it in the theater either. Um, So I was one of those people. That did not contribute to the bo- domestic box office take, but when we did watch it, I was pleasantly surprised, and that's the feeling. Maybe that's the feeling a lot of people had when they watched it. So, it's going to be one of those series where two does a lot better than one. I think. Yeah, I I'm think try- so. I'm trying to look up what was in July at that time, and the competition for that guy was the Wolverine. Was Wolverine? Okay. Um, Conjuring. Uh, Lone Ranger, R.I.P.D., Grown Ups Two. <laughs> Man, this thing should have succeed. This thing should have seriously. On yeah, Pacific, Pacific Rim should have been mopping up at the box. R.I.P.D. Does any do y'all remember that it. movie? Yeah. I watched it. Sucked. That was not a movie movie. That was like straight to video. I like watching it at home movie, but yeah, oh, that was like a. <laughs> pilot for the usa network that was fleshed out into a two-hour movie bad <laughs> that movie was make... fun for like 30 minutes and then it was like all right well then it kept going <laughs> all right so man of steel was in june right before this war war z oh. um the purge uh okay so uh, so here are the heavy hitters you're and we're thinking yeah maybe, this maybe... was june yeah so this was the stuff that people were still watching when this movie came out probably there you go that and makes then, sense and then monsters inc university Oh, and see, that was a big one, too. So, yeah. So it had some competition, and, and it just got pushed down to the bottom. But, yeah, I think we're still reeling from n- no no kaiju stuff. Anyway, yeah, there you go. So. Yeah. Well, I think it's time to, first of all, let me ask you guys a question. Let's look yes, around. Yes, I'm wearing pants. Oh, never oh, mind. Well, it's hard to tell. None of us I are, am not. None of us are together today, so you don't, you know, it's debatable <laughs> uh, what we, we, we could be wearing and. Um, I don't really need the details, but everybody get naked. Okay, there you go. Um, <laughs> no, I was going to ask about drinks. Is there anything interesting in front of you? Uh, your beverages, gentlemen. Well, I have the, uh, you know, this really special um, aqua 
you know, top deal from Worcester. I can't make this polar water more and more interesting. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, 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 that bit went to hell on me. I, I'm really sorry. <laughs> well, all right then. Uh, Matt, Matt's drinking water from it's, it's, Worcester. Worcester, Massachusetts. Matt, are you sponsored by Polar Water? I could only dream. <laughs> it would stop me from visiting the Publix and looking like a crazy person when I buy 20 boxes. <laughs> we are open to sponsorship. That's true. Maybe give them a call. Let them know you're Always. plugging them every week. Yeah, absolutely. Every, every day I, I'm drinking your Paula. It's so good. It's so it's good. It's wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. Go socks. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. <laughs> I'm drinking your water. <laughs> Landon, what have you got? Um, I have a smoothie that I made. It is a uh, triple berry with honey and granola in it. And, uh, I am getting a bunch of granola husks. So I apologize <laughs> if I randomly have to clear my throat because this is what I get for trying to be healthy. Every time you say husk, I think of like, like a corn husk, like in your mind, like, Oh, I can't drink it. I'm, it's, it's a horrible visual that doesn't make any sense, but that's what I get. I'm sorry. Well, I apologize yeah. for that. Somewhat hilarious sounding mental image you have. It's, <laughs> you know, this is a well known trade secret. When you're going to be do doing something vocally, you definitely need to get something like a smoothie or maybe a milkshake or something that's really going <laughs> to like, like goo up the vocal cords. It, and it makes it even better if there's something in there that's like grainy. That's even better. Yep. Oh, Fantastic. absolutely. I'm actually going to start uh, eating saltwater taffy while we record. So <laughs> oh. everybody prepare for that. <laughs> That'll go right along with my popcorn and Doritos that I'm about to put in my mouth. Oh, this and is bringing out go our, well. our, our, our new sponsorship, Laffy Taffy. <laughs> Laffy Taffy. <laughs> the official sticky candy of Nerd News Cafe. And enemy... Do you have feelings? Do you have feelings you don't need? I was Laffy about to say. Candy. We're here. I was about to say, <laughs> enemy to dentist everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not approved. Not approved. <laughs> also, also sugar daddies. Why don't we throw that one in there? <laughs> the candy that sticks to your teeth with a stick. <laughs> oh, yeah. That helps you. That gives you the leverage you need to pull those crowns right off your teeth. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> oh, How do man. you make your dentist happy for the next year? Sugar daddies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't forget sugar babies. Um, well... I went back to coffee today. I'm still drinking coffee. So, uh, freshly ground. And this is Pete's French Roast, as I mentioned previously on the podcast. It's delicious. It's very good. Previously on Nerd News. Previously on Nerd News Cafe. And still today, it is not expired Dunkin' Donuts. It is fresh, freshly ground Pete's French Roast. Highly recommended. Um, go get yourself a little grinder and, and grind you up some fresh Pete's. Don't forget to bump. Oh, yeah. If you're going to grind. Bump and grind, just like. Oh, I thought we were talking yeah, about know, cocaine. Oh so. dear. <laughs> <laughs> we went from coffee to cocaine, which really isn't that far. I was going to say it's not that big of a stretch. No, no. like one's legal and the other one's coffee. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. All right, gentlemen. I say we get into the headlines of the week. How about it? I'm going to start with a new DC series, upcoming 2018. There was an announcement this week um, regarding the cast and the characters of the Titan series that will debut in 2018, and I wanted to get I want to get your thoughts on this. Um, we don't know a ton about the series so far, but I can tell you um, that it will feature Dick Grayson, Starfire, and Raven as main characters, and then recurring we will have Hank Hall or Hawk, Don Granger or Dove. And Amy Rohrbach, a detective, who is a, the new partner of Dick Grayson. Uh, this will be live action. I don't know if I mentioned that. And um, the characters that they have announced, the actors they've announced that are going to be playing these characters, um, are, are all people that you would have seen on other series. So they're, they're experienced um, TV uh, characters or, or people that have definitely at least put in some time. So they're not new to the business. Um, Starting with Brenton Thwaites, who's going to be playing Dick Grayson. He's an Australian actor, and he would be known for his portrayal of Luke Gallagher on, on the Fox 8 series Slide. Um, and then Stu Henderson in the soap opera Home and Away. Um, those were Australian things that he was doing, but since moving to the U.S., he's been in Blue Lagoon, The Awakening. He was in Oculus. He was in The Giver. 
Gods of Egypt, and Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. So this guy... Um, He's 0 for 4. He started... <laughs> I don't know. I like I liked the last Pirates movie. That was that was well, funnish. And I think we all enjoyed the blue the Blue Lagoon, the Awakening. But, of course. You know. <laughs> Everybody wanted to go back to Blue Lagoon, didn't they? That's Absolutely, the movie you wanted. Yeah, but uh, so so he got some acting chops, you know, over in Australia. Came over here. He's done. I mean, these are big movies that he's been a part of. So. Yeah, I was about to say those are big productions. Yeah. So this is someone that people would know for Starfire. It's an actress named Anna Diop. It's di- D-I-O-P. I don't know how you say her last name. Diop. Is this another Gal, is this another Gal Gadot kind of situation we're going It on could here? be. And I think, by the way, I, Matt, I think you were the one that was saying Gadot, and you were right the whole time. Should I say that? Do I need to give Matt credit? No, I don't, I don't think so. Because I mean, I've heard her say only, it a couple times. I'm only going to make the situation worse if you do. Then I, <laughs> I mean, I can't guarantee I say my name right half the time. So, But now, that is true. I have seen her say her own name a couple of times now, um, especially when we were watching the mean tweets uh, from Jimmy Kimmel, and she does say Godot, So, Well, to be fair, I don't. would, would she really know how to pronounce her last name? So. Oh, probably not. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> not, in, not in our, you know... Swan tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's in America. It's Godot, and you'll like it. Exactly. Yeah. Just ask it's the Indians. Godot. We it, just ask the Indians. We get to tell people what they're called. Oh. <laughs> it's true. Oh, they weren't from India. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, okay. So Anna Diop is from uh, Everybody Hates Chris, and she also guest starred on Lincoln Heights, Whitney, and Touch. Um, she was in a film called The Moment. So and she was on the Messengers, which was a CW supernatural supernatural drama, and then she also appeared in Quantico. So she's been in a lot of stuff too. Um, I don't know much about Tegan Croft. She does not have a link in Wikipedia, so I can't tell you. <laughs> about... If she doesn't have a Wikipedia page, I'm not convinced she's a real person. Yeah, that she may not really True. exist. Even this... I have a Wikipedia page. I think. True. Maybe. Um. So and then and then apparently there. We're expecting that Beast Boy will also be on the show, but there's no information about who might be playing Beast Boy. So, Landon, I feel like you are probably the biggest Titans fan of the group here. Um, how are you feeling about this show? You, you feeling optimistic? Are you excited, interested? What are your thoughts? Well, I'm a little bummed out because uh, it was just announced that Marcus Mariota is not playing today. So that means oh. the Titans are going to... Oh, you wrong mean the Titans. show? Uh, wrong Titans. My bad. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, the prospect of a live action Teen Titans show is exciting because it seems like the Teen Titans is one of the more popular franchises DC has right now because the Teen Titans Go cartoon on Cartoon Network is a massive hit. Uh, cross appeal to everybody. I mean, people I used to work with that I would not... It even know, uh, would expect they knew what Teen Titans Go was. They would come up to me at work and say, "Did you see? Did you see the latest episode?" I was watching it with my kids. It's awesome. So the fact that they have a more, I guess, adult uh, Teen Titans project coming out, I'm excited for. I'm kind of surprised in some of the in some of the characters you said are going to be main uh, mainstays on the cast, particularly Hawk and Dove. I mean, that's a, it, uh, Hawk and Dove is a are characters that do have a pretty well-established history with the Titans in the comics. But when it comes to like the cartoons, like, like they are not in Teen Titans go at all. They were in a handful of the, um, original animated show that came out in the nineties. So I'm kind of surprised that, uh, that they're being, you know, pushed to the forefront like they are. And, and the, and the lack of beast boy is kind of surprising as well because beast boy is a super popular character, but, I, you have to imagine we'll eventually see BB. So I'm excited uh, at the prospect of a live action Titans coming. Whether it'll be good or not, I don't know. But you know what? The Titans, uh, they're two for two in television products in the last, you know, 15, 20 ish years. So I'm excited to give it a shot. Nice. Yeah. And, and right now they haven't announced whether or not this is going to tie together with the same universe as like the Flash and Arrow. Um, but it seems no, like. I, I, I have to. See, it's like going back to that story you had last week about how DC's trying to like, you know, not going to have the ham-fisted tie-ins where everything is in the same universe. I'm 
I'm kind of curious how they're going to handle Cyborg because Cyborg is a, a character that a lot of people first knew of when he came to prominence within the Teen Titans. But here recently, he's been elevated to, you know, a top guy in the DC universe. So I'm curious if, if we're going to see any Cyborg in this show. Well, and they don't mention it. It doesn't come mm-hmm. up. Yeah, yeah, there's no mention of Cyborg. And again, going back, there's no mention of Beast Boy. So I'm kind that that does kind of catch me, like make me look at it a little sideways, especially when you have the inclusion of Hawk and Dove. And uh, and, and who else did you mention uh, was uh, was the third character that's going to be rotating in? It's a police detective, Lindsay Gort. <laughs> yeah. As Amy oh. Rohrbach. Yeah, Amy. Sure. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like sure we'll go with that but it's surprising that you're gonna mention those three and no mention of beast boy or yeah and so you know what my theory on this is um you know some of the biggest uh cost or expense for a tv show is is like the cgi development and so it seems to me and i know i get it because we've got starfire and raven who both have kind of um, powers that you couldn't just do with practical effects probably there's going to be there's going to have to be some special effects in CGI but Cyborg would have to be pretty much CGI continuously it, it, yeah exclusively and same with Beast Boy same I mean with Beast Boy. You, yeah you can have somebody in green face paint but I mean anytime he uses his power you're going to have to CG in a tiger or you're going to have to get a really really trained tiger to stand next to the guy that's playing uh Robin, which <laughs> yeah. I really don't know if the insurance is going to sign off on. So, so there you go. It could be a cost thing. Yeah, that is true. I, I, I that that didn't even uh, enter into my thought process. But when you say it, I mean that sounds very spot on. Both Beast Boy and Cyborg, er, uh, Cyborg are very costly characters to put on screen, especially in a live action sense. So here's the downer piece of this information. <laughs> it, when we originally got wind that there was going to be a Titans series, the announcement um, was was uh, basically made that it was going to be on TNT. But this was four years ago, almost that this announcement Which came. Which seems out. weird. Why would you put anything like this on TNT? Yeah, like like th- th- this screams CW or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not even that good. Apparently, DC has plans to launch their own live action streaming service in twenty eighteen. <laughs> hang, hang me. <laughs> Are you so, see, what could possibly go wrong? Well, every, everybody's everybody's doing it, man. It's the thing to do. It's only because Disney does it and or is doing it. And on top of that, I mean, they've got the Marvel card. And I mean, if they didn't have the Marvel card, I don't think Marvel would have done that. Yeah. No. Like, just I don't want to sound like your mom, but if everybody's jumping off the bridge, are you going to as well? I, I mean, uh, this just screams a bad idea. DC can't afford it, I don't think, you know, because who's going to pay for it? Well, they are yeah. por- they're partnering with Warner Brothers Television, and and Titans won't be the only series that's going to come out with this new streaming service. We're also going to get Young Justice, so a third season. It's going to be the third season of Young Justice. So, mm. and both will air exclusively on the digital service run by Warner Brothers. So, <laughs> and it sounds like this is just the beginning because their vision is to. Uh, according to this article, deliver an immersive experience designed just for DC fans. Well, I guess that means uh, the days are going to be limited for the streaming on Netflix of Arrow and The Flash and uh, Legends of uh, Tomorrow, because I'm willing to bet that those will be put behind this uh, streaming service yep. as well. That's right. I, it's, it almost sounds like eventually that's where everything will go, Like you, which leads me to believe if that's the case... You're going to see Arrow, you're going to see Flash, you're going to see Supergirl. All these things are going to be <laughs> sucked to the DC streaming service. That was my special sound effect for that. <laughs> and and then, what that was. And then when that happens, they probably will cross over. And here's another sign. The writers of the Titans show are Akiva Goldsman, who would you would know, Matt would know, Star Trek Discovery. Yep. Uh, DC Entertainment President Jeff Johns. And then Greg Berlanti, who is known for writing Arrow, Flash, and Supergirl. So that to me is a big indicator. If those shows cross over. Why wouldn't this one? Oh, absolutely. Those those shows are uh, they have yearly crossovers and they're always massive rating hits. So again, like you just said, why wouldn't they cross over? Yep. So there you go. Interesting. I wonder. 
I I'm kind of bummed because originally when you said uh, DC was having a streaming service, I thought it was going to be something like Marvel Unlimited where I could go back and read all their like comics and stuff like that. And to hear it's just like DC Netflix, that's a bummer, man. Mm-hmm. DC Netflix, that's what you're getting. So open those wallets, all you cable cutters, because yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Instead of going to Netflix and Hulu, you also need to get your CBS All Access so you can get Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> you you need to get your Disney streaming service. You need to get your DC streaming service, and more to come. Yeah. I guarantee. Oh, what was the other one we talked about? Weren't uh, wasn't it Disney? like? Uh, yeah, I said I mentioned Disney. There was another oh. one though. Um, crap, I can't oh, remember God. now. But but um, AMC. AMC. There you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I still gotta have cable with it. Yeah, you, you know, it's gonna get to the point where all these people have their own separate streaming services. You know what's gonna save you money? Signing cable. up for cable. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's you know, maybe that's the conspiracy theory is that oh they make God. enough <laughs> subscription series you'll just be like, oh, screw it, I'm just gonna go back to cable. Guys, we just we just broke the big conspiracy. We uh, delete it. this out of the podcast, otherwise big cable is gonna come and kill you. Big cable, as I say, you gotta say big cable. <laughs> I'm seeing helicopters in the sky above my house now. Oh, you guys too? Yeah. yeah. But you know, it's kind of crazy because all these are, it's, it's, mm, I'm, I'm torn on this right now because what have we always wanted? We've always wanted to be able to build our own cable package, a la carte cable, right? Mm -hmm. And now you can kind of do that, but they all cost $10 for each streaming service. I was service. about to say, it's ridiculous what they're charging for them though, is, is this huge, it's, it's all $10, that's all base uh, numbers and mm -hmm. just, just a, uh, you know, a little bit more to make it worse. Netflix just went up on their prices. I don't know if you know. Yeah, they did. But, but here's they went the up thing: a dollar on their two Who, screens and two dollars on their four screens. Who's who's going to cancel uh, their their service due to this price increase? Are y'all? No, I'm not. Because now we're going to bend the, over and take it up the tailpipe. But their their <laughs> press release with it was: we want to do more content. We want to do more shows. We want to, you know, they want to do more production stuff for themselves. And that was the reason for it. And, I mean, we did get Stranger Things. We did get, you know, um, they, they've been doing all kinds of Marvel stuff for however long that lasts. And then, you know, they've done a couple movies here and there, but that's that's where they want to go with it. I'm not against it. No, but like, and, and I mean, we, oh, go ahead, man. I was just going to say, recently, I, the, the news has been out there that Netflix has kind of been struggling uh, with, with their yeah. budget. So. And, and I'll... I'll I wanted to mention, I mean, you, you talk about Stranger Things and, you know, Daredevil and stuff like that. For every Stranger Things you get, you have like 15 terrible, bad shows that get dumped onto Netflix that we never hear of past their first season. Because as somebody who, you know, I, I bring the top of every month what's coming to Netflix and what's leaving. And especially this month, there are a ton of Netflix original shows and I could I don't I don't know how much every one of these costs but to produce multiple episodes of a show it can't be cheap and if you're dumping like 20 some odd episode or tw episodic shows out there this month and one of them's good that's not a good return on your investment so that's like true. I I I like the fact that Netflix wants to swing for the fences and go big and grandiose but don't, but like, like, give us more Stranger Things and less, you know, Adam Sandler, Native American. <laughs> no, I, I, I get it. And I, you know, they, they have a ridiculous a, six, right? That was one of yeah, there we go. Yeah, wow, I you remember that. that. Good on you. Or is it you, Lana, that hates the Nelson ratings? Oh, God. The Nielsen ratings are yeah, so Nielsen ratings. archaic. So, but mm. if you think about it, Netflix has the perfect way to figure things out because they see what people watch how long they watch, if they rewatch. I mean, that whole big, you know, data dump for them tells them everything they need to know about the show. So if you hate a show, don't watch it. P move past it because then they'll immediately go, well, Adam Sandler's not working out. Adios. You know, mm -hmm. that's 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 very true. They can they, they have a much better system to see how many eyeballs are on what than the Nielsen ratings do. That's mm -hmm. that's a great point. Because, you know, you, th probably the Nielsen ratings, I, I really have no idea how those things, how they really gauge them. But, you know, it's all about did they watch it instead of how long did they watch it? How far in the in, in this season did they get? You know, like if everybody watched, I don't know, we'll just say a, a series, uh, Mud, Mud Cakes came out and everybody didn't get past <laughs> episode two. And there's, you know, like you said, 20 episodes. They're like, OK, well, that's crap. Goodbye. You know, you're gone. It's yeah, faster than <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really liked the pilot of Mud Cakes, but but episode two, it just just really <laughs> yeah. went went off the rail. 
They're not talking about mud or cakes. I, I can't watch this. <laughs> the show is built on lies. That's right. It sits on a throne of lies. <laughs> mud cake lies. Yeah, th- th- he's, you're rolling through some of the, the series that are on there. Another show that's that went freaking insane was 13 Reasons Why. Mm-hmm. I mean, and who would have thought a show like that would have took off like that? You know, that's... They're just kind of throwing stuff out there and seeing what sticks, I think. And well, see, that's th- that's a fair point. I'd, uh, I don't think anybody was banking on 13 Reasons Why to be the big you know, hit it was. But again, I, I still feel like that's the exception, not the rule at this point with Netflix. Though I do feel like 13 – or um, sorry, Stranger Things, actually, they did – you could see the production value and the money that went into the visuals for that show. Mm-hmm. I mean, they really went all out on that one, and I think they knew that it was going to be big. Like, there was no misconception of how big that was going to be for them. It's just, just, I mean, you don't think about it, but all that 80s nostalgia crap that they have to go find, I mean, that can't be cheap. That can't be cheap to go source a, you know, a 70 model pacer, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and make it look like a 70 model pacer. And and again, it, like, like I said, I like the fact that Netflix is, you know, swinging for the bit, uh, fences and trying to do big stuff. And a lot of these shows they do give the budget to and they and they want these shows to succeed. But at the same time, I wish they had, you know, better vetting process, maybe. True. Because cause still- it, 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 some of these shows obviously aren't for me, but then I'll see like the trailer for it, like new Netflix original. It's like th- that that show is going to be dead on arrival. Like like and there's no ifs, ands or buts about it. I'm going to counter it- that argument for a second and just say I like the fact that Netflix just kind of like OK stuff and then gives the money and stays out of it because it gives content creators the ability to try things and take risk. And, you know, you know. I don't want everything that's created to be designed to be, you know, popular Um, because that's I want people to be able to explore and be creative and try different things and put out content, unique content that I've never seen. But I totally get what you're saying, too. They're they're maybe maybe when they're going through the pitches, they shouldn't just say yes to everything. But but I also do like the fact that they kind of stay out of it. And you're getting shows that aren't like full of notes from Netflix or something like that. That, that, that's a good point. Maybe a happy medium is is not so much content up front. Like they release what they call a pilot half season or something. You know, you get eight eight episodes, and then that way they're not out that money. Because I mean, really, what we're I think what the base of what we're talking about is we don't want Netflix to fail. fail. Right. Right. You know, yeah. neither, none of us want that here because we do like them. I mean, Hulu's the same way. Hulu does a lot of pretty good content. You know, so. They came around first. I guess we're partial to them because they did come out first. But at the same time, they do stuff we really enjoy. I mean, like like you said, for every great show, there is a rotten one. But maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't rotten to someone else. There's there's people in there who mm-hmm. don't want to watch superhero movies or shows or anything regarding it. They would rather watch, you know, sad dramas or documentaries or stuff like that. That's what they want to watch. And Netflix is hitting, you know, hitting it out of the park for them. So, you know, I. I I'm okay with them feeling around in the dark until they find, you know, the lot <laughs> on some of these shows, but you know, they do need to protect their money a little bit. Yeah. I refuse to think that there's uh, forms of entertainment that aren't made specifically for me in mind. I refuse <laughs> to accept that. I know that it says <laughs> this is Landon's content on your Netflix when you load it up, but it says that on everybody's not Landon, but their name. <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, <laughs> it's not true. You take that easy, back. Easy, easy. <laughs> just let it sink in for a minute. Don't you know? Just, just be okay. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think that um, I like Matt's idea, and maybe they ought to go to a format where it could even be a ca- a category for them, like pilots of original content, and and maybe it's just two, oh yeah, like like two or three episodes, and then you're right, they they have all the information, all the data they need because they know how many views they're getting on everything they put out. For some reason, Netflix is very very protective of their data. They do not share their views, I'm, their downloads. They don't do that. They keep it under lock and key. And they I should. guess I guess they don't have to share it, but at the same time, they they should be using that data to, to kind of guide some decision makings in some way, but. What I'm saying is put that data to use. Put the teasers out there. G- sure, give people money. Greenlight everything if you want to, but give them one episode or two. You know, I and- think I think a good a good thing is is 
four, three to four for me because that's about the time I'm like, I can't do this anymore, or I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm 100 percent in. Let me get in here and counter that. In this day and age where everybody wants to binge on everything, I can only imagine the online reaction we would have gotten if, like, Stranger Things or Glow or BoJack Horseman just put up two episodes. And it's like, all right, you like that show? It'll be back in eight months. Well, they have it already in May. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Stranger Things, I mean, how many episodes did we have? What, 12? 10? I can't remember. I think 12. Yeah, yeah it's, that's nothing in, in, in their kind of genre. And I mean, CW, good God, we've talked about them before. That They were, I think Supernatural, every season has 25 episodes. Those you know. seasons are never ending. <laughs> and, and that's they, not a knock on Supernatural, but they I just love keep Supernatural, going and But going. there are some times, yeah, I'm with you. I'm like, holy cow, how is this angel going to get back to heaven? It's like forever. I mean, how do you write yourself out of the biblical freaking apocalypse? They found a way, apparently. Twice. Twice, Twice yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, I mean, they've got, like I said, they've got so many other shows on there that they're trying. But I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. There are shows they know are going to do well, or they have some concept based off what people watch, or they know are going to do well. So... You know, those will probably get full seasons, but like you said, I, I'm kind of with uh, Justin on this. If they had a category that said pilots, and you just watch them, and then they have the rating system on, you know, whether you're using a console or a computer or a tablet, or whatever, you can rate that show and say, you know, at the end of it, maybe have a little caveat or even in the in the the title of it, hey, don't forget to rate it so we know what we're doing. Yeah. And I get your point, Lane, and it would be tough to say, all right, here's a couple episodes of something, and now now you have to wait like a year or something for the series to come out if you liked it. But but I do also think that, I guess Netflix has to find a way to be a little more um, uh, judicious with its choices or, or something, because if they are just throwing money at all their original productions and, and they're not getting the content out there that, you know, it, it, it is a waste if you're putting 10 series out that nobody watches and one that, that people do. Um, we don't just need the numbers. We want quality. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. They got to figure it out. But, uh, hey, one series that's coming back in February, Ash vs. the Evil Dead, coming back for season go. three, February 25th. I know... Matt has been watching Ash vs. Evil Dead. I, I love the Evil Dead series so much, and I have not gotten to see this series yet. I really want to see it, but uh, apparently that's doing well, and I know, Matt, you've enjoyed what oh, yeah. you've seen of it. It's so good. I mean, it's Bruce Campbell to the fullest. It's that character to the fullest. you got Lucy Lawless in there, who I think she's a stellar actress, so she does a really great job, and then all the supporting cast they have are hilarious. I mean, it is like gore and just unbelievable. It's... it's, it's <sighs> I'm going to say it's 90% Army of Darkness and 10% Evil Dead. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of jump scares, but at the same time, there's so much funny stuff in it. It it makes me laugh a lot. I, I enjoy it. You're really missing out, man. you got to get caught up. I might just go buy some DVDs at some point. Do those still exist? Betamax? No, no. Laserdisc? No. <laughs> no. Now you visually get it implanted in your head. Oh, okay. Yes. That'll Physical work, Physical media is dead. I'll get my Google implant, and I'll be good. There you go. <laughs> Um, we got an announcement that Gore Verbinski is going to be the director for Channing Tatum's Gambit movie, ladies and gentlemen. And where would you know Gore Verbinski from? Well, you might know him from The Ring, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Lone Ranger, and A Cure for Wellness, and the Bioshock movie that never got made. Um, <laughs> that was two for three. Yeah, so... so uh, but, ooh, that, that Lone Ranger movie was not good. Well, I heard The Cure for Wellness was insanity, too. Mm-hmm. I wanted to check that out. I did too, but a lot of people told me, said, did you like Shutter Island? I was like, yeah. I was like, just watch that. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we really don't know what to expect because like, this guy's a little bit hit or miss. Um, Channing Tatum, of course, is going to be the star of this movie. And for me, I just, I know, I don't know what you guys think about that. I, I'm just not on board with him as Gambit, but I... Uh, I don't know. He, I mean, I guess Gambit was kind of a pretty boy. And it's the, it's the accent that worries me. Oh yeah, he's going to have to put on such a that Cajun accent. Accent. Yep. Yeah, and as a person who has heard some really atrocious Southern accents, it I don't know if I can do it. I know. I think I would have <laughs> rather this been someone that I really hadn't seen 
do a lot. Like a new face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that right there. Saw that, Gambit in the Wolverine, or is it the Wolverine or Wolverine Origins? Wolverine Origins. It was uh, what's his nuts from Friday Night Lights, Riggins. Yeah, but he wasn't a big name then. Yeah, but I, he wasn't a big name then. But I already associated uh, him as Riggins. So whenever he showed up as Gambit, I'm like, "What is Riggins <laughs> doing here? He needs to get back to Texas." <laughs> like so. So I'm gonna I, miss the game. I kind of want to echo what Jay says because it's like at this point it's like I don't know if I'm going to be able to look past the Channing Tatumness, yeah, to see Gambit. But then again, I said the exact same thing about Heath Ledger as the Joker, and there was only one instance where it's like, oh, holy shit, that is Heath Ledger. So yeah. I don't know, but yeah. but I I don't know. This Gambit what an amazing movie. thing though. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that that is true. That Heath Ledger was the personification of the shark and Jaws in that movie, but it, like like. Gambit, do, do we need a Gambit movie? Like, 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 can we ask that question? Yeah, maybe that's the question that needs to be there, asked. I've always heard a big drive for a Gambit movie or Gambit to be included in any of the X Men stuff. Like, I've that is the yeah. number one thing I personally have heard all the time. I would be fine with him in an ensemble movie, but do we need a solo movie? Yeah, that. I mean, I mean we're getting. Mm-hmm. Hold on, we're getting a solo movie. Excuse me, a Han solo movie. But do we need a Gambit solo movie? <laughs> Good lord, <laughs> jeez. Um, I, I don't. I, I is he interesting enough? I guess is the real question. I don't know, and I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I depending on how well Channing Tatum can put on the affectation, it might be one of those things that it's it's almost cringy to watch. That's what I'm worried about. Like, even the trailer's gonna tell you everything. The first moment he speaks, and if it's not like Creole to the freaking soul, it is not. <laughs> going to be in my wheelhouse to watch at all yeah so and i mean and, and, uh, again it's just like and and what you guys said gambit is always a very popular character again i just don't know if he can carry a movie himself I get, like if, exactly. if he was yeah. if he was part of an ensemble if he was part of you know the x-men that would totally be fine but like yeah. a solo gambit movie i just don't know well, I mean, and that's and that's what you've got to ask yourself, or well, they've got to figure out where they want to release if they're going to do it or not. I, I don't know if this has been wrote, or been wrote, if this is already been written or whatever, um, but th- they're going to have to have some surrounding uh, characters that are strong. I promise you, or this is going to be flop city. I mean, if you don't have a Jean Grey in there or a rogue. Or, I mean, I mean, if you want to go dig up a Jubilee, you know, you're going to have to do something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if the intent, and there are some rumored plots out there for this movie, but I don't know if the intent is for this to be like an origin story for him, because you all know we all love a good origin story. Oh, we're, not, we're, not, oh, we're, not, of course, yes. we're not sick of origin <laughs> stories at all, but... Nope. Um, yeah. You won't even see you won't even see my face near the theater if it's an origin story. I am done. But maybe we know who Gambit is. Maybe <laughs> it'll be more like a like a Wolverine kind of movie where he's just kind of doing his thing. And uh, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Like the the Wolverine where we were just like yeah. thrown into him in the middle of his midlife crisis, and we're just like, okay, yeah. <laughs> or maybe let's do it backwards. Let's do Gambit like Logan and make it like the end of his life. How about that? <laughs> or oh, better okay yet, that. we'll make him Benjamin Buttons. So <laughs> the movie ends with him as a baby. Nobody will see it coming. It's perfect. <laughs> Here's the only thing I worry about the Gambit movie is that they take liberties with, number one, his powers, and number two, who he is. I swear to you, if he's from New York, because he can't do he that won't accent, be. He won't. or he's like Radioactive Man where he can charge his body or something stupid, I'm like, you're done. They won't do that. They... There's no way. I, I have to believe this. they won't. <laughs> I know. I just have to believe that they wouldn't do that. Lady Deathstrike. All I got to say. You can't. Well, I know, but you can't sell it. <laughs> you can't sell a movie saying this is Gambit and give them something else. I, I just. Well, they. Uh, X Men Origins Wolverine says what's up to that statement, Jay. Oh, yeah. Well. I mean, just look what they did to Deadpool. Poor Deadpool. <laughs> Yeah, what the hell was that? <laughs> That's a great question. Is he the same person? Yeah, yeah, Brian Reynolds. I mean, God bless him. He saved Deadpool. But uh, but God, X-Men Origins Wolverine was a terrible movie. I did like Sabretooth in it, though. That was the sad thing about it. The the guy, I cannot yeah, remember his Liam name. Schreiber. I thought he was a great Sabretooth. He was. He was pretty good. And if they furred him out, like you, know, like you saw in the first X-Men movie, you know, eventually like he got furred out. 
because that was supposed to be kind of an origin. Because mm -hmm. um, it what said do you mean kind of an origin. Yeah, it said it on the damn title. It was not an origin though. I mean, Wolverine goes back even farther, but that's that's, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, let's not talk, <laughs> let's not talk about this bad movie. I'm sad now. Uh, I am <laughs> sad, but I just like him as Saber Tooth. I thought that he was, had real potential. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a suggestion, guys. Instead of putting money into this, uh, you know, potentially crappy Gambit movie. You know what we, like you know what the world really needs? <laughs> what, Justin? What do we need? I think we need a Sonic the Hedgehog movie franchise. <laughs> and I you know what? For this production. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily Paramount Pictures agrees with me and they have secured <laughs> yes. the film rights to the long-running Sega video oh, game. I'm sure it was a huge legal oh, battle. <laughs> Oh, uh, that they raped and they clawed for these rights. Yeah, right. Well, here's some good news. Tim Miller will serve as executive producer, and you would know him as the director of Deadpool. Um, okay. So I'm hoping we're going with, like, a dark, brutal Sonic a the dark Hedgehog. Gritty dark, Sonic. gritty reboot of Sonic the Hedgehog. Wait, no, they actually had that game. It was called Shadow the Hedgehog, and it sucked. <laughs> Hot take. Uh, up until uh, Sonic Mania came out, Sonic hadn't had a good game in 20 years. Wow. Like, like every game up like between Sonic 2 and Sonic Mania that's come out has not been good. So I, I understand nostalgia is a very powerful uh, tool to use, but... It has sold 360 <laughs> million copies worldwide. So... Just saying. Congratulations. All right, sure, whatever, but still. And oh. just to ensure that this is... thing is going to be a hit, Jeff Fowler will be making his film directing debut with this first oh, Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog movie. Why not? Just jump right out there. This is going to yeah, be a hit. Let's, you let's know get it. a newbie. Yeah, that's going to work out. Oh, and by the way, it will be a combination of live action and CGI. I was going to ask that. Oh. Well, <laughs> we can't oh, lose. We cannot I lose can... with this, guys. I... I can only hope that they recreate the very awkward scene where a human woman starts to make out with a cartoon Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, I can only I hope. I can only hope and pray let's, that this happens. Let's do some casting ideas, guys. <laughs> let's let's throw out let's throw out our 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 idea for Sonic as we need someone with uh, some kind of weird shell helmet blue. Well, I think oh. well so that would be like if he's going to be C I imagine that that Sonic's going to be CGI. I'm thinking like a Roger Rabbit situation I here. No, I think they're going to get a person that wears a helmet that well, looks like Sonic. But spines. you also thought Lion King was going to be people in costumes walking around, and that's not going to happen. Yes. <laughs> There's no. Well, here's the thing. Jungle Book was that. Okay. It was like it had people and it had CGI in it. How do you do the Lion King? Where are the people? There are none. It's going to be... There are none. But yeah. they can just... have live animals and then CGI animals? Yep, that's this what I think gonna... you're going to get. Oh my gosh, there's going to be so much poo thrown by monkeys in this thing. Well, that'll I'm be awesome. Like... That'll be fun to watch. Yeah, uh, I was going to yeah. say, I'll, I'll still watch that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking for a voice, though. You've got you to have somebody who's got like a like kind of a, high, a little higher pitch, maybe an annoying sounding voice for Sonic. Um... I don't know. He's been done Haley different Joe ways Osmond. in the cartoons. Who'd you say? Haley Joel Osment. Haley Joel Osment. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know which direction I'd go on that one. I'll have to think about it. Just get Urkel to, to voice him again, like Urkel. he did in the cartoon. The little white. Yep, there we go. Boom. Done and done. You're welcome, Hollywood. Okay. <laughs> we done. need somebody for Tails. Do we? <laughs> oh, yeah. If we're going out, we need every Sonic character that we can possibly pull out of the freaking closet. I'm talking oh, Shadows, Cousin, you know, Bados. I don't even care. Anybody you can. And then we need to voice every one of those stupid, you know, animals that are stuck in the machines. And then we need to Dr. Uh, Dr. Eggman. Eggman, sorry. I always get Dr. that one. Yeah, I always get the Eggman guy mixed up. Hey, well, um, you know what? Uh, we can cast Amy Rose. We can cast Knuckles. Don't forget Knuckles. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Yeah, bring the edge on the shadows. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He had a bad attitude. So again, <laughs> we'll go get, possibly, oh, let's go get the guy that did Raphael's voice for Knuckles. I mean, he's already done one bad attitude. Why not another? <laughs> what the? <fuck? laughs> well, I don't know. Raphael is a bad at. He's cool but rude. It's Weird cool tangent. Rude. Uh, there is um, artists who have fat Sonic the Hedgehog characters. 
They have driven the Sonic characters as fat characters. This is weird. That is. Thank weird. you, the yeah. internet. I guess. Yeah. Landon, <laughs> Landon, I just want to caution you. I think you're probably about a click away from some Sonic porn, so just be very yeah, careful. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're closing that browser. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and dunk Last my cash in uh, in the bathtub just to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> not just so, not just Sonic porn, fat Sonic porn. It's head your way. <laughs> I, hey, different strokes make the world go round, I guess. Obviously. <laughs> well, so keep keep uh, I don't know keep keep a little bit of money. Go get your movie pass, because guys, you're you know gonna want to you're gonna want to hit up this movie as soon as it comes out and say it a lot. Fact. And I feel with a lot of the fanship that's going around. This this statement really holds true now. It's not the movie we wanted. It's the one we deserve. Exactly. That's, that is a fact. <laughs> That's what's happening right now. That feels appropriate, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to that's gonna do it for today. I think we've used up our time, gentlemen. So uh, I think I just want to invite people to go check our Twitter because there are some, definitely some things we didn't get a chance to talk about today. Go see our likes Go see what we commented on. That's at nerd underscore news underscore cafe. Um, you can also interact with us on our forums. Um, you can get there via our website, which is nerdnewscafe.com. Scroll through, take a look at our ugly mugs, and then at the bottom of that page, you can see a link to the forum. We're on Facebook. We've got a Gmail, nerdnewscafe at gmail.com. We've got all kinds of stuff. So feel free. If, if there's things you want us to talk about, things that, that have blown your mind or you're excited about or, or maybe a little miffed, um, we'd love to hear about it and we'll, we'll bring it up on the show. You can help us control the content. We do it for you guys. We're right. doing it for you and the kids. Yep. You and the kids. Don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes podcast because that, uh, that's how we get out there and, and everybody gets to know about us and you have other people to talk about our show too, instead of just mumbling to yourself and looking weird in your cubicle. Mm -hmm. Seriously, if you have not taken the uh, opportunity to, please go to the iTunes store. Uh, five stars rating, that's the only rating you can do. Uh, those ratings do help uh, you know, bring more eyeballs and earballs to the podcast and help us grow. We, and, and to those that have given us reviews, we greatly appreciate it. Yeah, like, uh, like my wife and my son have both given us five-star <laughs> ratings. So well, thank, thank you to them. Uh, we do have uh, one review out there that's anonymous. I don't know where it came from, but somebody said they want to have our babies. So, okay, whoever well, that um, person is. Okay. Uh, again, we have a forum. Register in there, and we can talk <laughs> about how you can make babies with us. <laughs> oh man, Landon, tell Not people it, how. Uh, <laughs> there had to be a better way to phrase that. Well, uh, Twitter.com/slash/landoz. Yeah. L-A-N-D-O-Z. That's where you find the latest musings and random happenings uh, with me. Uh, I'm thinking towards the end of this week, this Friday, the 13th, I'm going to be streaming Friday the 13th, the game on Twitch. So uh, keep an eyeball on my Twitter for that link and uh, come jump on the PlayStation Network and uh, have some fun. Uh, oh, and they're uh, having a physical release of Friday the 13th, the game on Friday the 13th. So uh, it'll be fun. Check nice. it out. Matt. And buttmunchships.com on your button munch. And much. Matt, tell us about your stuff. Uh, just letting you guys know, we're still doing the Tracking Track podcast. We're still following the voyages of Discovery. It's really heating up with the last episode. He's uh, we got up. to see We got to see the actual Discovery ship three episodes deep. Um, <laughs> there's a lot going on. It looks crazy. I don't even know how to describe it in short form. So get on that podcast and listen to me and Thomas talk about... Um, what's going on, what's happening, and try to explain it as best we can in our own thoughts and feelings about what we saw. Uh, like I said, Tracking Track Podcast. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Tracking Track Pod. Um, that's about all I got. Let me ask you this. How much bleeping yes, I, have you had to do so far? How many, how many edits? I, the edit last time went a lot better than previous times. <laughs> um, I haven't had to bleep anything yet. Okay. Uh, but there was a lot reserved. of there was a lot of whys. Why? Okay. Why? 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 We we pulled that from uh, your uh, your segment of why. That's the uh, only question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no, that it's it's really crazy. It's it's a lot. Just to give a kind of a short recap of the last show we just watched to kind of intrigue you, it looks like a lot of shows mixed together. Mm -hmm. We still have Star Trek at base, but it looks like the Expanse, Aliens. 
Um, there's a little bit of predatory kind of thing going on there and Avatar. So okay. I I don't know how to tell you what's going on without you watching it. So Avatar The also. Last Airbender or Avatar the CGI Disappointment? Uh, the 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 avatar that you are successfully going to ride soon. Okay, cool, gotcha. <laughs> All right. And get lost in the uh, bioluminescent force. I will. Sounds good. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a teaser for Thursday. There was a Battlefront beta this weekend, Star Wars Battlefront 2, that is. Landon and I just have spent a little bit of time playing, and we, we got a few things to say about that. And uh, Matt got a chance to watch The Gifted, and he might have a few words about that. And if you want to hear that and more, I would invite you to come back on Thursday and have another um, exciting listening podcast session. I don't know what I was going. I don't know where I was going, but that's that's what you're going to okay. get. That's what you're going to get. It's okay. So since I'm out of words, I'm out of words for the day. I'll just say until next time. In transmission. Oh, for f- sakes. Landon, you did that on purpose. <laughs> no, sorry. Cassie uh, stuck her head in the basement to tell me something right as you started rolling. <laughs> so I did not plan to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we have a great secret sound now. So. And take two. <laughs>